Isang masayang pagbati na may ngiti sa aking mga labi. Naghahanap ba kayo ng makakatuwang sa pag-review ng inyong anak? Meron yan sa DepEd. Ang Itulay Online Tutorial ay libre at handog ng ating kagawaran sa pangunguna ng OUA ICTS EdTech. Ito ay isang proyektong makatutulong sa mga mag-aaral, katuwang ang mga magulang o kasama sa kanika nilang tahanan para masagutan at maunawaan ang mga modules. Hangad din ng programang itulay ang matulungan ang ating mga guro sa kanilang mga blended learning classes. Ang ating itulay ay mula kinder hanggang senior high school. Bukod sa academics, meron din tayong mga special programs gaya ng All is Wellness, Reading and Math Remediation, Storytelling, Mommy Tech Talks Klase sa Gramatika Speech Class Financial Literacy At marami pang iba Pinalawig din ng itulay Ang ating Alive Program Para sa mga mag-aaral Mula Grade 1 hanggang Grade 3 Gayun din ay mayroon tayong ALS Program At Fed Tutorials Na makasisigurong makakamit ng lahat Ang Inclusive Education May SPED hotline na rin para sa inyong mga katanungan patungkol sa special education. Kaya, subaybayan mula lunes hanggang biyernes, mula ikasyam ng umaga hanggang ikapito ng gabi ang ating itulay. Sa ating pagtutulungan, maiaangat natin ang bawat isa. Ating itutulay ang pagkatuto upang di mapigil ang pag-aaral ng kabataang Pilipino. Itulay natin ito, Sulong Edukalidad. Mabuhay! Good day to all! I am your tutor, Madge. Welcome to Itulay, a free online tutorial, an initiative of the Department of Education, Information and Communications Technology Service, Educational Technology Unit. ICTS EdTech. This program is aimed at helping and assisting learners from kindergarten, senior high school, ALS, alive and SPED learners. Aside from answering the modules, the Itulai is offering programs which you will surely look forward to. Together with our parents and teachers, the Itulai will bridge the gaps where difficulty and ease meet in learning new knowledge and skills. So, let us prepare our modules pen and paper. Ready your mind to see and hear worthwhile and interesting lessons. Let us now study and learn together with our volunteer online tutors. Tara na!
Go ahead and down to 13 na. Nakamute ka? To 13 na, nakamute ka po. Okay, isang magandang lunes ng hapon mga kaitulay sa ating mga students, parents, co-teachers. Welcome po sa ating itulay online tutorial, General Biology 2. Ako po si Tutor Tina from San Lorenzo Ruiz Senior High School, SDO Pasig. Happy Monday sa aking partner, Tutor Easter. Hello! Magandang hapon din, Tutor Tina. Magagandang hapon din, mga kaitulay. Ako po si Tutor Easter ng Horacio de la Costa High School from SDO Caloocan. Tutor Tina, ready na yata ang ating mga Biostar students. Yes, today is March 14, 2022. Nasa week 5 na po tayo ng ating aralin. And for this week, pag-uusapan natin ang basic taxonomy. Okay, so before we start, Tutor Easter, ating usual reminder muna no, sa ating mga Biostar students. So please prepare uh, your pen and paper para sa mga new concepts na i-discuss natin for this afternoon. Also prepare the gadgets and dapat ready tayo, ready ang ating sariling makinig at matuto this afternoon. Okay, Tutor Easter. Okay, ready-ready na ang ating mga bias star students talaga for our attendance check. Just write your name, grade and section, school and location, name of teacher to the chat box, and please share our live stream today and please be respectful with your comments. Okay, shout out yun ang inyong mga teacher ang school and then share the live stream ating FB Live. Okay, so... Yan, so nagpapasalamat kami last week, Tutor Easter, padami ng padami talaga yung mga viewers natin, no? Okay, so para sa ating week 4, we have the first set of Biostar students. We have Joanna Del Rosario, Jimuel Enriquez, Russell Andohar, Ainsley Rustia, Kier Cantero, Elena Remozora, and then we also have Alia Venas. Carl Morillo, Mary Anting, Ayla Golisinda, Charmaine Balesteros, Nicole Villamore, and then we also have Charles Rosal, Marco Mangubat, Christford Pilapil, Norina Agustin, Jam Sereno, and Drew Kison. Okay, para naman sa school, Tutor Easter. Wow, talaga naman, Tutor Easter. Ang dami rin natin mga bioactive teacher at bioactive partner institution. So, sino po ba yung mga yon? From Novalicia High School, Ma'am Janet Tamse. From Moracia de la Costa Senior High School, yours to yeah. me. From, from Lorenzo S. Sarmiento Senior National High School, Ma'am Noraida A. Sali. Okay, salamat po, dear teachers. Yan, meron pa. From Padre Garcia National High School, Ma'am Ladin Lindukay. From Jones Rural School, Ma'am Cheryl Gumpal Reyes. And from Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School, Ma'am Jen Melendres Pepito. Okay, meron pa, Tutor Easter. Meron pa, di ba? Ang dami na. Ang dami. Ang talaga. So, uh, from Marawi Integrated National High School, Sir Jerwin A. Gutierrez. From Godofredo Reyes Senior National High School, Ma'am Maria Bernadette R. Corsado. Sam, from San Mariano National High School, Mr. Noli L. Baldin. Okay. Congratulations po sa ating mga Bystar Students of the Week and then thank you so much po sa ating mga partner schools. Okay, so yes. Tutor Easter, let's go now to our recap. Okay, so yes. reviewin muna natin yung diniscuss ni Tutor Easter last time about evidence of evolution. Okay, so babasahin ko na yung mga questions natin and then Bystar Student, um, if you want to answer, please type the number and then your answer. Okay, for number one, the Galapagos tortoise share a common ancestor but have necks of different lengths to best reach the food they need in their environment. 
Is it letter A, convergent evolution, or letter B, divergent evolution? Okay. So, yan yung ginagasak. May mga sumasagot na ba sa atin, Tutor Easter? Pakitay po ang mga sagot, mga biostar students. Is it A, convergent evolution, or B, divergent evolution? Type-type nga po ang sagot. Okay, so okay. i-reveal na natin ang correct oh, yes. answer. Okay, the correct answer is letter B, divergent okay. evolution. Okay, so let's go now to number two. Okay, number two. Humans, chimpanzees, and gorillas all have similar hand structures. The hands of these organisms are examples of is it A, homologous structure or letter B, analogous structure? Okay, Biostar students, please type the number before your answer. Kamusta ang ating comment section, Tutor Easter? Nag-aantay pa tayo ng sagot, Tutor Tina. Ang <laughs> dami naman sumagot, letter B. Ay ngayon, may sagot na po si, e uh, si Elena Remorosa, letter A. Drew Quizon, letter A. So, Tutor Tina, ano na po ang sagot natin? Okay, tingnan natin yung correct answer. The correct answer is yes, letter A, homologous structure. Okay, so let's go to number three and last. Okay, so we have here, like many animals kept in human captivity, mating pairs of pigeons are often paired together based on their genetics to, to achieve the most desirable traits in their offspring. So, is it A, artificial selection or letter B, natural selection? Okay, so ating mga by star student, number three and then your answer. Okay, so may tayo ng sagot, Tutor Tina. Pero kanina, ang dami nila sagot, puro letter A. So, shout out muna tayo sa mga school. Yes. A. Anong answer nila sa ating number? Letter two? A, Tutor Tina. Ang sagot nila, is it letter A? Okay, of course, letter A, artificial selection. Very good ang ating mga Biostar students. Talagang nakinig sa discussion mo last week, Tutor Easter. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's... Naman. All right, so let's go na sa ating most essential learning competency, Tutor Easter. Ano nga ba yun sa ating week 5? Okay, so ito po ang ating mga most essential learning competencies for week 5. Explain how the structural and developmental characteristics and relatedness of DNA sequences are used in classifying living things. Second most essential lear learning competencies is identify the unique distinctive characteristic of a specific taxon relative to other taxa. So oh. Tutor Tina... All right, so let's start our discussion. So for the last two weeks, uh, Tutor Easter, yeah, diba, you discussed to us all about evolution and how these processes um, involve uh, in giving diversification of species. So nagkaroon ng iba't ibang species due to the processes of evolution. Okay, so now that we have knowledge in the evolutionary history and the relationship of organisms or group of organisms, we can use this knowledge no, in order to classify or to group organisms based on their shared ancestor or ancestry. And ano bang pag-uusapan natin? We are going to deal with systematics. So what is systematics? It's a study of biological diversity and the relationships among organisms. And ano no, very broad tong pag sinabi natin systematics tutor Easter, napakalawak nito, di ba? At meron siyang two specialized field. Uh, the first one is taxonomy. So taxonomy is the science of describing, naming, and classifying species. And the other one is phylogenetics or phylogeny. And this is the study of evolutionary relationship among species. Okay, so for this week, ang pag-uusapan lang natin taxonomy. And then for week six, okay, so dyan na natin i-discuss ano ba ang phylogeny. Okay, so let's start. So, meron tayong two questions at uh, Tutor Easter na sasagutin today. Why and how? Okay, so una muna, 
why do scientists classify living organism? But haba natin kailangan mag-classify ng living organism. Actually, maraming reason, no? Super Easter. Opo, maraming so, reason talaga. Yes. And then we have only three main. So, first one is, ano-ano na ba yung mga identified or mga known species? At ano-ano pa ba yung mga unidentified or unknown species? Or ilan na ba sila? Gano'n pa ba kairami? Gano'n pa ba ka-diverse yung meron? So, pwede nating ma-discover. And then for number two, ano yung mga characteristic, defining characteristics that these species or each species um, have in order for us to uh, classify them na ah, ito, itong species. Okay, and for number three, of course, the relationship between these species. Okay, so ang unang-unang, yes, Tutor Easter, yes. Okay, so ang unang-unang nag, uh, who first attempted to classify living organism is Aristotle. So, si Aristotle, he was a Greek philosopher, and he classified all living organisms, or all animals in his work, we call that the Historia Animalium, or in English, History of Animals. Okay, so dito, animals lang yung um, uh, klinasify ni Aristotle. So, paano niya klinasify? Based on their similarities. So, animals that, that live on land, animals that live on land. And then animals with blood and animals without blood. Okay. And then also, he group creatures. Pag serving creatures, green up niya kasi lahat living organism and non-living organism into hierarchy or order. So, this great chain of being, eh, so pinangalan niya. Pinangalanan lang to ng mga uh, commentators or followers ni Aristotle. And we're in... Um, as you can see here, merong mga different le levels, di ba? At yung plants, nilagay okay. niya sa uh, medyo mababang level. And then, yung mga humans, nilagay niya sa near the top of the hierarchy. And then, ang pinaka-topmost dyan would be God. Okay, then may mga angels, goddesses. Okay, so ang limitation natin dito, kung titignan natin, no, Tutor Easter, uh, he only grouped or he only classify the organisms uh, sa dalawa lang, two major classification, plants and animals. So, paano naman yung mga microorganisms, di ba? So, then we have this Carolus Linnaeus. So, this Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus, or also known as Carl von Linné, in other reference book, you may read that as Carl Linné or Carl Linnaeus. Okay, so, but the, the name Carolus Linnaeus, ito yung Latinized. Okay, so ito yung nakalatin name niya si Carolus Linnaeus. And ito yung ginagamit niya sa mga publications niya, sa mga scientific work niya. Sa nakalat, nakalatin, in Latin language. But in Swedish, yeah, you may, we may know him as Carl von Linnaeus. So he was a Swedish botanist and explorer, and he developed two things. Again, so the first one is a taxonomic classification system. We call that the Linnaean system, where yeah, where in the organized uh, different organisms into larger group to more specific categories, the hierarchical system. And then the second one, he created a scientific naming system called the binomial system of nomenclature. Okay, so let's start muna sa binomial system of Tutor Easter, bakit ba kailangan natin magkaroon nito? No? Why do we need to have the universal naming system? E pwede naman natin tawagin sa common name. Dami naman natin common names. Diba? Oh. Siyempre, Tutor Tina, kailangan natin i-classify para malaman natin yung mga karakteristik ng bawat ano po, species. And the, from there po, malalaman po natin kung ano po siya, what they belong, where they belong to kingdom ba siya, what kingdom they belong to, what phylum they belong to. Yes. Actually, Tina, nung nag-aaral ako, paborito ko to eh, kasi gusto mong mag <laughs> sa mga scientific names ba ng mga mm -hmm. organ. Oh, oh. Magandang topic nga talaga. Okay, so it's because no Tutor Easter, yung unang-una, common names yan, can vary by languages or by just dialects, di ba? So we have here sea urchin and then Tutor Easter, ano bang, uh, taga saan ka ba? Anong probinsya mo ba? And ano yung dialect na meron kayo? 
At uh, ako ay uh, from two province, so Tagalog kasi Tagalaguna yung mother ancestor ko. Pero yung father ancestor ko ay Bicolano, so Bicol, from Bicol. So doon sa Tagalog, na si Orchan natin, sa Lungo. Pero sa Bicol ay Santol-Santolan kasi mukha siyang parang Santol, di ba? Ah, okay. so, kaya <laughs> Ang tawag nila mi kadalasan minsan ay ano po santol santolan. Mm-hmm. Ako naman kasi tutor Easter yung nanay ko from ano yun from Samar. So ang dialect nila na meron sila doon waray. So ako ang alam ko talaga dito tayo ever since no. Hindi ko alam yung Tagalog term niya. But ano kaya ko niyan? Tutor Tina. Hindi ko pa po natatry. Alam ko lang yung name. But in Cebuano, we call this Tuyum and in Ilocano, we call this Maratangtang. So here no Um, nasa Pilipinas pa lang tayo, Tutor Easter, but the common names vary na within the country pa lang, di ba? So, yun isang problema ng common names natin. And then, second one, common names can vary because of the location. Okay, so una, we have this, in some parts of the uh, some parts of the world, we call this animal mountain lion. In some parts of the world, this can be known as panther, puma, or can be called cougar. But we are only referring to same species. Diba? So, ganun ka, ano ang, ang ating common name. And then, we also have the problem, common name can also be misleading. Okay, so we have your picture of a jellyfish, which is not actually a fish. So, that's why uh, meron tayong classification na jelly, sea jellies. And then, we also have seahorse, wherein this one is a fish, a marine fish. Diba? So, kung wala kang idea kung ano talaga yung jellyfish, pag, nalaman, pag narinig mo lang yung common name niya, isipin mo, hey, it's Diane. And then, and you ha, you, when you hear the word seahorse, hindi mo isipin is Dasha. So, ganun ka, misleading at si common name. So, that's why we have, um, si Carlos Tineus designed a universal naming system wherein kahit sa ang lugar ako magpunta, kapag sinabi ko yung scientific name, I'm referring to only one, Species. Hindi tayo malilito-lito na kung ano-ano. Okay. So, this one is what we call the binomial nomenclature. So, when you say bi, it's a prefix which means two. So, meron siyang two names of naming, nomenclature of naming. So, yung, yung two parts na yun um, contains the genus and the specific epic. And we have these rules in writing. And alam niya ng mga, dapat ng mga STEM students natin, mga biostar students natin. So, dapat alam na nila how to properly write scientific The first one, this, the name should be in Latin. Okay, wala tayong makikita ditong Korean na scientific name. So, doon ma- ma-discover natin siya in Korea or the Japanese Japanese na scientific name. Doon sa, ja- sa Japan siya ma-discover. Or let's say Tagalog or Filipino. No? All names are in Latin. Then, the genus of our organism begins with a capital letter and then the rest of it, naka-lower case. And then the entire scientific name should be italicized when it is typewritten and then underlined when handwritten. Okay, so I said, 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 I And then we have the Pantera Leo, which is the scientific name of lion. So kahit saan ka pa magpunta, when you say Pantera Leo, nagkakaintindihan kayo. Ah, okay, we're referring to lion. Okay, and all taxa must have a common, uh, have, must have an author when described. So let's say Homo sapiens L, L stands for Linnaeus, which is the uh, the author. So siya yung nakadescribe. Or meron pa ang isa, no, kapag um, uh, obvious na or alam na natin yung genus name, we can just write the Capital letter and then dot. Let's say dito, homo sapiens. So we can just write it as H sapiens. Okay. All right. So so this one, I meron tayong different uh, international nomenclature codes based on living organism. So for the algae, fungi, and plants, we have the international code of botanical nomenclature. So sila yung nag bahala dyan in naming algae, fungi, and plants. But in naming animals, we have international code of zoological nomenclature. For bacteria, we have the International Code of Nomenclature Bacteria. And for viruses, we have International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. So, sila ang bahala dyan. That's um, universal. Okay. 
So, let's go now to how to per Easter. Nasagot na natin yung why, di ba? So, ba paano ba tayo or how do we classify, how do scientists classify unique organisms? So, for the per, uh, first one is morphological trait. So, when we say morphology, we are talking about the shape and form, whether it is internal or external. So, thinking na natin, you know, may similarities pa. Right? So, let's say, for example, we have here different organisms. We have human, bat, whale, and cat. And all of them, meron silang same, uh, yung presence ng similar bones. Diba? So, na, alam ko, na-discuss to last week ni Sugar Easter. We have the humerus, radius, ulna, carpus, metacarpus, and phalanges for uh, this organism. So, may pare-pareha sila. Um, Parts, no? So that's how, yun ang unang tinitingnan ng scientists in order to classify organism. So actually, ito yung main foundation ng classification ng ancient or eastern, right? So ito yung talagang tinitingnan ng mga taxonomies. Next one, we all, uh, scientists also rely on developmental traits. So here, meron mga organisms na in their adulthood, they look very different. Magkakaiba talaga sila, di ba? But if you check their embryonic development, there are certain phases or stages sa embryonic development nila na magkakatulad sila. And then we can say na ay, they are related to one another. Pwede natin silang i-classify because during their embryonic development, meron silang certain stage na they look similar. So let's say, for example, we have your fish, salamander, tortoise, chicken, and human. So as you can see, human, we have also tail during our early embryonic development. And then, yan, okay, same with the other. And then for the last one, third one is the genetic trait. So as we can, I, ang alam natin sa genetics, the presence of yung uh, arrangement, yung sequence talaga ng DNA. DNA. And yeah. And ayan yung pinakita ni Tutor Easter last time were in the similarities of human DNA and protein sequences to other animals. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, yung, yung um, morphological traits yung main na tinitingnan. But this one, si genetic traits, siya talagang makakapagbigay ng, ano, ng exact relationship. But this should go hand in hand. Dapat uh, kung ano yung nakikita natin sa morphological traits, will go then magiging similar din in the genetic traits. Okay. So let's go now to the second na dinevelop or create ni Carlos Linneo. So we are done with binomial nomenclature already. Let's go to, to taxonomic hierarchy. So uh, in taxonomic hierarchy, he developed this classification with eight levels. And these are the larger domain. Next would be kingdom. Phylum, class, order, family, genus, then species. And para ko, uh, sa akin, Twitter Easter, no, para matandaan ko to, I use a mnemonic. This one, yeah, their King Philip came over from Great Spain. Okay, so sa ating mga Biostar student, kayo kung gusto nyo mag-device uh, ng sarili nyong mnemonics para matandaan nyo yung sequence nitong hierarchy. Yeah, no, kung anong mas easier sa inyo, uh, pwede nyo gamit. Pero sa akin, napaka-effective dito sa Twitter Easter. No? Like, yun lang siyang uh, ginagamit din. Alam ko na yung, uh, yung pagkakasunod or sequence ng high. Okay, Actually, so Twitter this... Easter, ay, Twitter Tina, kapag, ano, kapag meron kang mnemonics, ay madali mo na matatandaan. Yeah. No? Kingdom, yung pagkakasunod. At lagi yung tinatanong kapag mag-exam ka. Yes. Sa mga entrance yes. sa mga PSD, laging yes. kinawa ko na. Kaya lagi ko yung uh, in, uh, in, in, pasay sa aking mga students. Okay, okay. so in each level po no, ng ating uh, taxonomic hierarchy, we call that a taxon. Okay. So the whole, yung lahat ng, ng level, we call that the taxa in their plural form. But in each taxon, we describe this as, uh, we describe set of organisms and then they are grouped based on their similarities. Anong ibig sabihin mo dyan, Chutertina, na um, nakagroup, no? Uh, na tinidescribe mo yung certain characteristic ng, ng, ng organism no? based on their similarities. So let's say we look at this example. So wala nga lang domain dito, pero uh, later on, we discuss natin kung ano ba yung mga domain. So let's say we have here kingdom animal. Yeah. So we have a butterfly, fish, elephant, lion, fox, 
um, wolf and then bull. So all of those are animals. That's why kingdom animals. Then when we go down, uh, we have the phylum for data. Aalisin na natin ngayon si butterfly kasi when we say phylum for data, may backbone. So wala naman ganun si butterfly. Then when we go down, we have the class mammalia and aalisin na natin si fish kasi siya lang yung hindi mammals in this group. Then when we go down to order carnivora, we will remove um, elephant because siya lang yung hindi uh, carnivore. Okay. Then we have the family canidae. We have the genus canis and then the specific or the specific species we have the familiaris. Okay. So let's say for example, no, para sa ating humans, um, domain eukarya, kingdom animalia. We have the phylum for data, class mammalia, order primate, family hominidae, genus homo, and species sapiens. So that's why meron tayo scientific name of Homo sapiens. Okay, so yan. Okay, so let's go now to the domains. Okay, so the domains, the, the domain is the largest um, classification in the uh, taxonomic hierarchy. And we have three, right? Super Easter. Okay, so we have we have the domain eukarya, you ha we have the domain archaea, and then we have the domain bacteria. Okay, so let's go now to, then domains can be uh, broken down into smaller categories. We have kingdom. Okay, so meron tayong six kingdoms. The archaeobacteria, eubacteria, protista, fungi, plantae, and the animal. Bigyan na, uh, uh, i-describe natin itong mga kingdom na meron. Okay, so for the first one, kingdom archaea, the word archaea means archaic. So ito yung mga mi or microorganisms that are ancient, okay, ancient bacteria. So they are prokaryotes, meaning uh, they don't have nucleus. So that's why ito kasing mga uh, microorganisms na to, they were discovered first bago pa nila ma-discovered yung organelle na nucleus. And wala din silang mga um, membrane-bound organs. So most of, all of our kingdom archaea are unicellular and they don't have peptidoglycan on their cell wall. And most of them are extremophiles. And so when we say extremophiles, they love extreme environment to their Easter, no? So we have the halophiles, meaning uh, gusto nila yung extreme salt condition or salt concentration. The halobacteria, example natin. We also have methanogens or yung mga nagpro-produce ng, ng mga iba't ibang um, chemicals. Okay, ayan, methane. So, methanopyrus, candleri. Okay, ng ating example. Then, we have also thermophiles, yung extreme temperature, high temperature, pwede pa rin silang mabuhay dyan. So, we have thermoplasma acidophile. Okay. So some of these um, organisms in our archaea are said to be autotrophs, meaning they can produce their own food, but some of them are heterotrophs or nagre-relay sila sa ibang organism for their food. Okay. So let's go now to you bacteria. So the prefix you means true. So this one, um, we have, this one is true bacteria and uh, uh, also include the blue-green algae or the cyanobacteria. So, ito yung mga organisms that we cannot see using our naked eyes, not super easy. So, kailangan talaga natin ng microscope. So, they are all unicellular, but some form um, colonies and filaments. So, kapag may colonies na sila or filaments na sila, yan, nagpukumpul-pumpul na sila, dumadami na sila. Millions of desubacteria. And unlike the archaeobacteria, we have uh, the cells of this one or the cell wall contains peptidoglycan. So they survive almost anywhere sa flora ng katawan natin and also they also give diseases sa atin, di ba? Yes. So ito yung mga example natin sa picture, we have cocci. When you say cocci, circular um, bacteria, circular shaped bacteria. We have bacilli or rod-shaped bacteria, yung lactobacillus natin, di ba? Example ng coxi natin, yung streptococcus. So pag titingnan natin siya under microscope, it's a chain of circular. Then lactobacillus, bacilli, rod-shaped siya. 
and then yung nasa Yakult, di ba? And then yeah. we have the Spirilla, or as you can see, spiral siya. Example natin dyan yung um, leptospirosis. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Ano mga yan na nakukuha natin sa mga blood, sa mga yung ng rats. Okay, so most of them are autotrophs and it could be auto, also heterotrophs or chemoautotrophs. Okay, and then we have the kingdom protista. So ito yung mga living, or, uh, living organisms natin, um, Peter Easter, na hindi uh, nag-fall or nag-fail na ma- makuha yung criteria ng plant, animal, and fungus. So they are just like plant-like, animal-like, and fungus-like organisms. And this one, they are now eukaryote, meaning meron na silang presence of uh, nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. So mostly, they are unicellular. Meron din, uh, nagko, nagko-form ng colonies and then meron din multicellular. Okay. So they're also, can be found mostly in water or aquatic. So some of them are autotrophs and some of them are also heterotrophs. So ito yung mga example natin ng kingdom protista. We have euglena. We also have amoeba and we have paramecium. And kingdom protista. Okay, so we have also uh, kingdom fungi. So we this one are all eukaryotes and most most of the uh, organisms natin dito na Twitter Easter sa kingdom fungi are multicellular. Very few lang yung unicellular, specifically the yeast. Okay, mamaya, i-discuss natin ang function ni yeast sa sa atin. Okay, so they are all heterotrophs, meaning we this fungi rely mostly on other organisms for their food. And then they form spores for reproduction. Na, naalala ko, ito yung uh, master's thesis. Uh, no, the, the bachelor's thesis ko, ano, to register. So, nag-aaral talaga kami yung mga fungi. How they develop through spores. Okay, their cell wall contains chitin. It's a polysaccharide. Ayan, so, na-discuss yan previously sa ating uh, general biology book. So, breaks down organic uh, materials. And napaka-useful ni King ng, ng mga fungi. You know, it provides drugs. Kung naalala natin, Tutor Easter, yung uh, na-discover na, ni Alexander Fleming, yung penicillin, na can actually a good antibiotic, di ba? And also, aids in food production. Yung wine making, kailangan natin ng yeast, beer making. Um, pag bibig natin ng mga breads, kailangan natin ng yeast. Yan sa mga food microbiology talagang gamit na gamit si yeast. Okay. This is also used as model organism in genetics and molecular biology. Okay. So kung ang model organism natin sa anatomy ay frog or cat, so dito in microbiology and in genetics, we can use chat. And But hindi lang puro positive. No? This can also cause animal diseases and also plant diseases ang ating mga fungi. So, meron tayong rhizo, rhizopus, neurospora, agaricus, which is yung mushroom, di ba? And posario. So, we have now our kingdom plantae. Ito. So, most of this yan, okay. Lahat to ay are eukaryotes, meaning they have the nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. They are all multicellular. And of course, they can make their own food through the process of photosynthesis na dinascuss ni Tutor Wendy and Tutor Eric sa atin ng uh, general biology. So they have this distinct cell wall sa kanilang a uh, distinct cell wall in their cell na absent yan sa ating mga animals. And they also have this chlorophyll, a green pigment, that is used in the process of photosynthesis. And we can divide that, the kingdom plantae, into two major groups. We have the bryophytes, wherein they are the non-vascular, meaning wala silang xylem and phloem. And then we have the tracheophytes, which are vascular. Okay, so isang kingdom na lang, we have the kingdom animalia. Okay, so all of this includes us, no? So this one are all eukaryotes, multicellular, meaning we have a lot of uh, cells. We are all heterotrophs. We rely on um, other organisms for our food. We cannot make our own food. We are considered also as consumer and the biggest kingdom in the living world. And then we have two major groups. We have the vertebrates and invertebrates. So as you can see here in the picture, again, we have the mammals, fishes, a fish, 
Um, and then we have birds, we have reptiles, amphibians, and then we also have the invertebrates. There you go. So ito ang ating summary for today's lesson. We have the three domain, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. And then we have six kingdoms, Tutor Easter, no? the eubacteria, archaea bacteria, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Okay, so ayan. Sana may natutunan ang ating mga biostar student. Okay, so kanina sa aking um, uh, discussion, no, Tutor Easter, you may mga nabanggit tayo, no? Uh, ito yung pwedeng maging career ng ating mga biostar student. So we have zoologists. Okay, when you say zoologists, this study or specialize uh, in animals. So pwedeng yung aralin yung behavior nila, not only the reproduction, but, um, behavior and then you can also specialize ano kung anong particular animal lang ang gusto mong aralin. Okay, and then we also have botanists. This one, like Carlos Linnaeus, he was a botanist. And he, uh, when you say botanist, he study plants. So you can also specialize in certain plant lang. No? Kasi sobrang diverse nga ng ating kingdom plant. Okay, so paano ba nyo yun? Ma, ma, meron bang, merong mga university that offers BL Zoology, but you can also take my, uh, let's say, yung course na tinuha ko, no? I took up BS Biology, and then you can specialize na lang with this one. Okay, so yan ang ating career connection. So sana maka-inspire tayo ng ating mga Biostar students in the future. Yes, okay. makaka-inspire tayo, Tutor Tina, <laughs> ng mga Biostar students, katulad ng mga kinuha mong, na kinuha mong course na, na uh, major in biology. So, What's on your mind? Ano na po ba ang ating output for the week, Tutor Tina, mga Biostar students? Ito po ang ating output. Explore your community. Choose two plants and two animals and take photos of them. Create a flowchart showing their taxonomic classification. Note, please make sure to always observe health and safety, safety protocols. Send your answers on our Facebook page, Itulay Gen Bio 2 with Tutor Easter and Tutor Tina until March 18, 2022. Okay, so Tutor Tina, sino naman ang ating mga bio star, bio, uh, mahusay output of the week? Ah, okay, so before that, no, um, make sure lang natin kahit naka-alert level 1 na tayo, by star students, make sure to observe pa rin health and safety protocols. And don't forget, beat the deadline. <laughs> okay, diba? So before tayo natin i-present yung mahusay output of the week, Tutor Easter, let's have the knowledge check first. Yes, opo. Sige po, Tutor Tina. Okay, so let's have this one. For number one, the father of modern classification is... Blank. Okay, is it A, Aristotle, B, Charles Darwin, C, Carlos Linnaeus, or letter D, Jane Baptist Lamarck? Okay, by star students, please type your answers, type the number, and then your answer. Okay, okay so 13, now we have an answer, letter C. Is it letter C? Okay, let's see. The correct answer is, of course, letter C, Carlos Linnaeus. Ang galing. Okay, let's go to number two, Tutor Easter. A scientific name contains information about its A, family and species, B, genus and species, C, phylum and order, or letter D, class and family. And, okay, ano na, type na, by star students, number two, and then the letter of your answer. Okay, Tutor Tina, we have an answer. Letter B. Is it letter B? Genus and species? Okay, correct. We have genus and species. Okay, for number three, which of the following statements about taxonic, taxonomic levels is correct? Is it A, species is the most general? Letter B, kingdom is the most specific? C, class is less specific than phylum? Or letter D, family is more specific than order. Okay, so pwede nyo gamitin yung mnemonics natin kanina, no? Para matandaan nyo or maka-answer kayo dito sa question number three. Okay, nahirapan ba ang ating mga Bystar students, Tutor Easter? Kamusta ang kanilang mga sagot? Oo, nahirapan nga, Tutor Tina. <laughs> pero meron tayong sagot na letter B at letter D. So ano po ba ang tamang sagot, Tutor Tina? Yes, so B the answer... 
The answer is letter D. Family is more specific than order. Okay, let's go to number four. Which of the following is the correct way of writing scientific names? Is it letter A, homo sapiens, lahat ay uh, naka lowercase, letter B, or rice sativa, always capitalized, and then it's um, italic. Letter C, felis catus, capitalized ang F, capitalized then ang C, and then we have letter D, zaya maze, which is nakabun or nakakaps lang, but it is underlined. Okay, ano na ating mga sagot? Five star students. Okay, we have an answer from Alan Mark, letter B, from Jesser Anbayani, letter B. I think uh, we have an answer. All of them answered letter B mostly. Okay, correct. So, very good. Nakinig talaga sa discussion. It's letter B or Isa Sativa. Okay, let's have the last one. What is the correct order of classification from the broadest to most specific? Is it A, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species? Letter B, class, domain, family, genus, kingdom, order, phylum, species? Letter C, species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, domain? And letter D, phylum, kingdom, domain, species, genus, family, order, class. Ayan. So, gamit na gamit ang ating mnemonic for... Today, ano ba ang answer natin? We have an answer already. So, most of them answered letter A. Is it letter A, Tutor okay. Tina? Yes, correct. Letter A for number 5. Very good. No? Talaga nakinig ang ating mga Biostar students. Okay. So, ito naman, Tutor Tina, ating mga mahusay output of the week. So, marami nag-submit po ng ating mga uh, output of the week at talagang nagpapasalamat tayo at kailangan natin yes. silang parangalan. So, from Horacio de la Costa High School, Arian Saavedra. From Ayla Golosinda, uh, from Horacio de la Costa High School. And from San Lorenzo Ruiz Senior High School, K Tutor Tina. Yes. Miss yes, Daichi yes. Valiejo. Yes. <laughs> and from Jones Rural School, Charmin Balisteros. And for from another uh, person of Jones Rural School, Whitney Lantano. Okay. Another one from Jones Rural School, John Wayne Prieto. And from Lorenzo S. Sarmiento Senior nice National High School, Amar Sali. Okay. Ito pa. From Jones Rural School, Francis Carell Bayan. And from Horacio de la Costa High School, Michael J. Lutiba. And from Marawoy Integrated National High School, Kimberly Nicole Fiestada. And I think this is a video, right? From uh, Gian Soriano, from Horacio yes. de la Costa High School. So ito ang effort, talagang nag-create siya ng video. Okay, so yan po. And we oh. appreciate all of your mahusay output of the week. So keep on submitting your output for our uh, next sessions. Yes. So these are our references to three Easter books and then our online references. And of course, don't forget also to support other senior high school science and technology subjects. We have physical science. We have empowerment technologies, disaster readiness and risk reduction, and of course, general biology too. Okay. okay for our feed feedback, so you have to scan the URL and uh, the QR code and type the U or type the URL https tenure.com e to live feedback form. So your complaints, your feedback, your comments, suggestions matter to us. Yes. And maraming salamat po. Susunod na po ang alternative learning system, lifelong learning. Okay, so again, this has been Tutor Tina from San Lorenzo Ruiz Senior High School, SDO Pasig. Ako po si Tutor Easter from Horacio de la Costa High School, SDO Caloocan City. Inaanyayaan ulit kayo na uh, manood tuwing lunes, 4.40 to 5.20 p.m. At nag-iiwan ng mga katagang magkakaiba man ang pagbabago o magkakaiba man ang ating mga lahi, ang ating mga kultura at at ating mga nasyonal. Kung tayo'y magsasama-sama ay magbubuo tayo ng pagbabago sa mundo. Hashtag Bayanian. Yes. Okay, next time or next week ulit, no, sabahan nyo kami uh, Monday, 4.40 to 5.20 p.m. Bye-bye, mga kaitulay. Salamat.
Salamat po sa lahat. Ang husay naman, natapos mo ang iyong tutorial session kasama ang iyong mahusay na itulay tutor. May bago ka bang natutuhan? I-share na yan gamit ang hashtag itulay level up. Huwag aalis ha dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo rin panoorin at salihan dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa itulay!